Hey everyone, George here, the Disney Family Man. What's going on? So yesterday I did a collaboration video with my good friends uh, Orange Grove 55, Vast Sky, and Rudio, and it's a it's a wonderful uh, uh, video. Please check it out. I'll link it down below. And I just wanted to come on with a little introduction of what this is. After the fact, we were done with the recording. Vast Sky and I had uh, stayed on afterwards and had a lengthy. Uh, discussion of many subject matters uh, involving the Walt Disney Company for which that he had um, recorded and this is going to be audio only it's not video it's just the discussion after the fact we were done recording and I thought I'd share it with all of you just because after the fact it was done you know and not really realizing how long that of a discussion that we had we thought that it would be best to actually share it with all of you so um, without further ado please enjoy the audio Still, just still, just us. <laughs> yeah, just us. yeah, that's how it always ends. Yeah, so I just, I kind of like hang on just in case because it's like. <laughs> um, I think, I think, I think at, at DCA and Universal show, I think that'd be freaking sweet. Yeah, <laughs> freaking <I> awesome. <laughs> I mean, so good. Oh my god. Um, I didn't know the Diagon Alley rumors were were up again. I had no. I idea. didn't know either. I mean, I heard it in the very beginning, like briefly, like as fast as they came in, they were gone, and then it's like. But I didn't hear anything recently. But hmm. they are making moves. Rudio is right, though. They are moving a lot of the um, a lot of the studio lot. Like they're they're making you know they're they're moving stuff, destroying stuff, all that. I mean, they're he is right. I, to what end? I'm not sure. And really, it's you gonna... know, that would actually be a good video as far as the studio making process a dying breed in the theme parks. Yeah, that would be a good that would be a good show. Because, you know, um, the, the the way, you know, it, it was huge in like the like the very, very late 70s, 80s and 90s, like just massive, just massive. But then when DVD and Blu-ray came out, you know, yeah. and you can get behind the scenes access and, and the, the art of movie making became so well known that the kind of interest on the public and the kind of like. The, the, you know, like their whole kind of hunger to know how movies were made kind of diminished. At the same time, immersive worlds became far mm -hmm. more, uh, you know, far more encompassing, far yeah. more like... Yeah, they know, wanted to more so experience the world rather than know the tricks of the trade. And then with all this software that's odd, people can make movies right at home on their computer. So it's like that's yeah. nothing new. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember back in like the early two thousands. You know, I remember getting fan films for Star Wars on like VHS even before there was like a like an internet really, and uh, you know, these things looked like decent productions. I mean, obviously, you know, very poor quality by today's standards, or even back then when you when you compare it to like Phantom Menace or something like that. But it was like you could do this. It was possible. And so, you know, that whole kind of thing changed. And that's why, you know, you know, Disney's other studios has made its, it made its big change from like, hey, here, here how the movies are made to, like you said, ride the movies, walk into the worlds that you've experienced. So, yeah. Yeah. It's fun to see of uh, what's going to become. Cause I still feel along with Universal Studios that Hollywood Studios, has a long way to go of what they're going to add to it and not just stopping with galaxy's edge and toy story. No, no, they're not going to stop with those. I mean, they're, I think they're going to, they're going to build it out. They're going to build it yeah. out. They're going to expand it, especially if the star Wars hotel is, uh, successful. Um, you know, expansion for star Wars galaxy's edge, I think is, is in the future somewhere. Uh, but, but also it's just, it's just under, it's just an underbuilt park. And, yeah. I mean, I heard concepts even like a long time ago where it was like, oh, we're going to get Indiana Jones Adventure over there and stuff, which would have been slick. Uh, but, but you know, things happen, you know? Yeah, things. yeah. and, and uh, Rock and Roller Coaster was actually supposed to be, let me see if I got the title correctly of what the Imagineer told me. Mm -hmm. Monsters, Inc. Door Vaulter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Monsters, Inc. Coaster. I guess they were thinking about an overlay for a rock and roller coaster. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. They actually said the concept art was all there. Everything was set. But during that time, it was the budget was so overly priced that they wanted to get a sponsor. Mm. And at that time, nobody wanted to sponsor it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have heard concepts. I, I never heard an overlay for Rock and Roller Coaster, but I did. I did hear a concept for like a standalone coaster based on the Monsters Inc. world that was like this close to. Like it was just. Oh yeah, it was. It was right there. It was literally right there. It's just so frustrating because you know you hear stuff like that. It's like oh man, it was this close. You know, it was just yeah. just for right there. And certain things happen. Certain things fall by the wayside. Hopefully, the Ticket and Adventures campus is not one of those casualties. But who knows? You know, yeah. it's tough. Mm. Yeah, but um, I I think Disney's Hollywood Studios of all the of all the parks is probably the one most likely to get some attention after Epcot. And yeah. obviously, Epcot needs so much work uh, okay. <laughs> for the state that it's in. Uh, but but I think like Disney Solid Studios, I think um, I think that's like that's the one that needs to grow. I think they're 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 seeing the demand like the demand for that uh, for for that park is extremely high. Capacity is extremely limited. And did you find it hard to get in there with tickets? Uh, as far as with the reservations go, uh, yeah. that park is always sold out every single day. You Jesus couldn't even Christ. change. You couldn't even change it if you wanted to. Really? Like, yeah, it's once those dates open up for the theme park reservations, Hollywood Studios is the first park that is completely sold out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's even with increased capacity. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And what's really holding them back is the lack of entertainment because usually you would have like the Indian Jones show and you would have the Little Mermaid show and you would have. I know the Beauty and the Beast show is coming back, but you know, usually you'd have all three of those things, and you'd have Fantasmic, and these were all things that would eat that capacity, which would provide yes. that capacity for to, to, to slot more people in there and, and give them something to do. Uh, I think Disney Solo Studios, especially right now, is like, you know, yeah. you get that park, yeah, there's some great attractions if you can get on them in the case of Rise, but there are some great attractions, but there's just and not that's enough that's how of them. it is. When we were down there, as far as walking, the crowds wasn't bad. It's when you entered the queue, and that's where you got, like, the high-volume crowds, like, between Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Slinky Dog, and uh, uh, Smuggler's Run. I mean, like, th those were... Smuggler's uh, <laughs> Run was high. Smuggler's Run, the line was... You ready for this one? Go ahead. It was back by the entrance to get the blue and green milk. Whoa. That is where it started. And they were using the backstage area there. Yeah. Jesus Christ. That's got to be like three hours or, 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 yeah. or two and a half or yeah. something. When, when, it, when the park first opens, you'd actually think, oh, yeah, you'd get on it right away. They actually, it's a two-hour wait just to get into the main queue. Oh man, that, that oh my god, uh, that that's insane. That's crazy. And and the thing about Smuggler's Run is, it actually eats people quite nicely. Like it's mm -hmm. it's it's one of the higher efficient higher efficiency attractions that I've that I've seen because it's four carousels, yep. and so that provides a lot of throughput. But at the same time, and and, and very good uptimes as well. But but at the same time, it's like like. That's tough. That's that's yeah. that's hard. So oh, it's going to be interesting boy. to see once a form of fast pass comes back. You know, yeah. Where are you going to where are you going to put everybody? Yeah, you know that, that that's really the, the 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 issue is, you know, and I've and I've heard concepts of well, that's one of the reasons why they want the reservation system is to limit how many people actually get into the park to have services like those. Yeah. So it's like, you know. The, the, obviously, the limiting factor on Fast Pass, how many attractions can have it, and so forth, is how, you know how efficient is your park at, at, at taking those people who would be in the queues and facilitating their needs, whether it be through a show, another ride, or so forth. And it's like, well, maybe we don't necessarily need to do that if we can limit how many people come in. Yes. And now, after having those reservation systems for this long, in a way, I can't foresee it going back to the way it was because. 
we were on the bus to Animal Kingdom. The park didn't even open yet, but when I went on to the app, Flight of Passage already, they were already anticipating a 145 minute wait. Real, just off the bat. Just off the bat. Yeah, just based on um, visitation patterns, when people show up, how many people they have, you know, reserved. Yeah. Uh, I mean, their prediction calculations. I mean, you know, everything that goes into their their algorithms that they use to manage the parks is, you know, that's invaluable data to know those numbers in advance. And uh-huh. there's just no getting around it. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I I have respect for Universal in that they do kind of listen to fans more than maybe Disney does. They're not so bullish with a lot of their ideas. They will try stuff out. People don't like it. They will get rid of it and stuff, stuff like that. They got rid of the reservation systems. They got rid of uh, some, some of their virtual queuing. They're, they're moving on to a new system, but, but with Disney, it's like, we're going to do what we're going to do. You know, it's just no matter what the, what the um, guests might say about it, because, you know, um, operations is that important to us. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, Chapek has talked about yields. He's talked about how efficient is our operation, how slim can we get it, how trim can we get it, and so forth. And um, because, because of that, yeah, if you're, if you're looking to keep those costs down as much as possible and it, at least control them in some way, then you have to do a reservation system. So, yeah. We shall see. Yeah, should be, should be, should be interesting. It should be a wild ride. Well, because especially when Disneyland Paris just did that uh, standby line yeah. pass, that yeah. standby pass. I mean, they said that was more backed up than just having a regular line. They said opening day. They said they couldn't even control the standby pass because what happened was. There was a glitch in the system that when people had a return time to come back, it overlapped with another set of people and everyone showed up at the same time. This is why, you know, <laughs> you hear Ken Potrock and he's like, well, the whole shutdown, this is what we've been doing. We're working on our IT. We're working on our IT infrastructure. And it's like, really? Okay, well, you got to fire those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, I mean... Look, if you're going to have digital resources that you're going to make use of, right, that you, you're you going to expect your audience to make use of, those have got to be down pat. I mean, those have got to be solid because people are paying so much and because yeah. the price is so high and some experiences aren't there. The value of it uh, has, has, I mean, the value for our side has decreased, but for them has increased dramatically. And what that has caused is people that were less um, or maybe more forgiving – of their experience, maybe had certain expectations. Well, now those are higher than ever. So the tolerance for those things is completely, I mean, it's in the floor right now because people are paying a lot of money and, you know, not <laughs> disposable income is quickly diminishing. So it's like, you know, you, you got to get these systems on. Um, yeah. Oogie Boogie Bash, for example, when I was trying to get tickets, I was actually very, very lucky, but some people, you know their charge, you know, their their cards were charged multiple times until they ran out of available credit on their cards and so forth. Ugh. That's gonna hurt their credit. That's You're gonna have to split those charges. Yeah, I, and it's like, but then Disney, rather than say, okay, oh, we'll we'll try to fix it. Well, you know, we'll we'll try to get this taken care of. Don't worry. Yeah, it's like, well, yeah, I, you just charged my card twenty five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to expect a reaction. Oh, absolutely. Um, and even, even, even with like, uh, you know, visiting, it's like, I, I spent four to $6,000 to be here. Mm-hmm. It's no, oh, we'll, we'll make it up or we'll do better next time. I'm here now. And so that's where a lot of like, you know, it's, you're going to, you're going to have, you're going to have pushback and you're going to experience that kind of, um, there, it's a metric called like. It's like like the like want to return or, or something like that or likely to return. You're gonna see that go down. Yeah. 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 And it's like you, you can't you can't screw people over and over and over again or or be deficient in your IT resources. Uh, yeah. 
over and over again. Yeah, if you're going to have all these type of reservation systems and different, tra- you have to make sure that they're up and running. Absolutely. Yeah. Before anyone even attempts to even use it. Yeah. Yeah. And now let me ask you this because I've asked several people. Sure. What do you do? You think during the demand that every single hotel room is completely booked for Walt Disney World's 50th? Like you couldn't even. I think the only hotel that has rooms left is the Yacht Club, and they're going for about three thousand a night. Whoa! And that's in October for the fiftieth. Okay. In that time frame, that eventually when Tron and Guardians and Ratatouille opens, do you think that they're going to start them out with the uh, boarding group, sort of like how they do with Rise? And I'm just more so curious because with Tron being right next to Space Mountain, there's going to be clutter between that. The two. From what I understand, the walkways between to get to Tron between I think it was it, it's Space Mountain store and mm-hmm. uh, Topia. Is that right? Kind of yes. where they are. Okay, yeah, it's like off to the side. You go through the back, and then there's the pathway. Right, and then. Um, Ratatouille is also a narrow path, from what I understand, to get there, to get around the France Pavilion. Is that right? Yeah, you have to, you enter the France Pavilion, You then there's like a long path, and then you make a left, and then and that's where it's going to curve, where that whole entire expanded area mm-hmm. is just going to be one big giant line, even before you even get into the queue for Ratatouille. Yeah, I know, yeah. Because the bottlenecking is really bad in, in both those areas, and those are the two, some of the two most anticipated attractions that they have. So, so it obviously, makes me wonder if they're going to even do a boarding group that when you, when it's your boarding group time, then you get access into that part of the land. Maybe, so maybe because yeah, if it does bottleneck in that way, very easy to station cast members just to do that. You know, now I will say. Ratatouille is interesting because there's also shops and so forth that you kind of want people to have have access to. But at the same time, it's like, you know, do we want to avoid these situations before they actually come up? I, look, you know, at Disneyland Resort, every single new attraction is getting virtual queues and all that kind of stuff and to, to, to manage that. Um, I saw Indiana Jones started temporarily yeah. with, the, with a queue and then they, I mean, a boarding group and then they stopped it. So what was the significance? Of that? So uh, the significance was, I think it was a, in preparation for like a Paris type thing, because the, the thing is, is they, I mean, I think people have it in their minds that they're managing demand, right? That because uh, because Indiana Jones um, at least back then, right? You have to understand that the state guidelines forbade them from using their internal queues, their, their, their indoor queues. And that's a quarter mile long of people that you could usually put, put in there, and then now you can't. Now add six feet distancing. So it was, they, they had to go through jungle cruise and all that stuff that they that, that, that use their queues just to hold all these people, and then it was spiraling out, out of there. With Jungle Cruise eventually coming back online, I think they felt that something had to be done in the event that these guidelines were still in place. So what can what can we do? Um, an interesting thing happened, though, and I think this has kind of changed my perception in terms of are they managing demand or creating it? Yeah. Because, like, what's their goal? Because what Indy showed was they created demand. Indy that... Most guests, I think, would do, but it was never a must-do in the same way that, like, Rise was. Mm-hmm. And it, ha- it hasn't been that for But for then the second time. that they had it as a boarding group, then it was like, okay, now I really want to do this attraction. Exactly, because people felt, well, if I don't get in, if I don't do it, I'm, not, I'm never going to have access to it in my day. And so you have this kind of casual mindset turn into... I must get a boarding group, even if I don't use it, because I won't be able to go on it if I don't have it. Mm-hmm. And they kind of want to have that option. And not everybody comes back to it, right? Uh, you know, there, there are some aggregate, aver- uh, aggravating or mitigating circumstances in which people you know, show up or don't show up. And because of that, um, they were creating demand. And I thought, 
that's really weird. Why would they do that? And then the Paris announcement came out, and it's like, oh, they pulled the big trick. If we can create demand, then we can create sales. Yeah. And it's like, that's why Rise hasn't gone anywhere. Rise should have been taken off boarding grip a long time ago. But if that demand is still there, if it's still artificially inflated, then you can potentially charge for it. And I thought it was very telling that they took Rise off of the ability because because in Disneyland you have guest relations, you have tours, you have VIP tours uh, for like celebrities and so forth. Extremely expensive. I think it's like seven hundred fifty dollars an hour, um, minimum of four hours or so, five hours, something, something, something to that effect. I think the buy-in price is like two thousand on top of that. Like it, it's an extremely expensive thing. But what that allows the celebrity to do is get pretty much front of the line access. You know, they they just get escorted in the back, and you got the plaid there. You know, let's get let's get here, and you're on. The only way to get on rise outside of a boarding group was through that system you could have celebrities and stuff do it right they took that away recently so it's like okay they're shifting gears here no didn't they say it came back did they did did it i thought i read an article that it they said it's now back i could be wrong i thought i just read it just like a couple days ago they said they added it back into the, uh, the, the VIP. Tours. Okay, that's interesting. I hadn't heard that. Let me see. Um, it. I. I just find it. I find it very interesting, though. I mean, you know. Um. Regardless of of its status on the VIP tours list, I find it interesting that boarding groups haven't gone anywhere, and I think it's. I, I, I really do believe that they are creating demand in, in order because immediately when Paris came out, people speculated, OK, what if this comes to the uh, U.S. parks and so forth? We had discussions about it. And almost everybody I talked to said, $20 for Rise, I'm going to do it right now. You know? But yeah, now that makes me wonder because when they said about purchasing, mm-hmm. you know, depending on the attraction for the Fast Pass, yeah. would that mean – in the case of Rise, that there's not even going to be a uh, standby line. It's either you pay or you don't go on it. Potentially. Potentially. Um, I think in the Paris system, uh, you're going to have you're going to have that uh, you're going to have that system augmented by virtual queues. So if you want to ride that attraction, you can do it in two ways. You can either get a what was previously a traditional fast pass type thing right and then come back at your time or you could pay and pretty much get right on um at the time you select or whatever and that was kind of the two ways two ways you could you could do it um but people a lot of people that i talked to almost everybody said 20 dollars or whatever or 15 euros i would definitely pay that to go on rise and i'm like that's the trick yeah. That's what they were trying to set up. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, that's the kind of trap that Disney has kind of created. And when you can monetize in that way and you can create artificial demand in that way, that leads me to believe to your original question about Tron, Ratatouille, and so forth going on virtual, you know, boarding groups. I would think yes to that. Um, but but if you want to get ahead of the line, then Fork got the fork out the money right so if they don't premiere a system like this in the states similar to paris before that time period i think boarding groups are inevitable for those attractions maybe not ratatouille so much but guardians and tron for sure yeah because i mean people people are going to be booking vacations for those oh absolutely and if they have the beauty system it's going to be like you said or or, or eventually they will debut a system like that, and it'll be the same thing. But if you, if you want for an line access, pony up. I think that's yeah. where they're going. Yeah. yeah. So, I would I would say yes on those two, but again, the Walt Disney World operation is very different than Disneyland, so you know, take that yeah. with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. No. I mean, as I said, especially <laughs> the location and the demand for Tron and Guardians yeah. that it's I, I could just imagine. And I think it, even from an operation standpoint, I think it makes sense because you take pressure off Rise and Disney Southern Studios and you shift that. Uh, if you can open Tron and Guardians simultaneously, you shift that towards the other parks, which is yeah. good for their parks, which is good for, you know, getting visitation out there. And it, which, it's, not to, which not to mention Tron and Guardians will probably open in, I'm going to just guess summer 2022. And that'll be the first summer during the 50th celebration. So you, when kids are out of school and everything, I could imagine the the anticipation based off of the resort hotel rooms that are booked. Oh yeah, yeah. That it's yeah. I mean, assuming they can get everything ready by that time, I know that uh, construction crews. It, what's interesting is is that a lot of people think, oh well, uh, Universal and Disney compete for guests. That's true, uh, but they also compete for cast members, uh, which a lot of people have kind of found out. Um, the other thing that they compete for is contractors. So they compete uh, in the Orlando market for skilled guys that can do a lot of the design work that come out of both Universal Creative and WDI. And as a result, that's why we're seeing some delays in some projects that it's like unexplained. Uh, it's not just yeah. cash. It's we need guys to do it. And so no, also with Guardians don't they have the delay because they're now waiting yep. for James yeah. Gunn the footage. Film, the footage. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for the footage. And look, I would do it to get around this issue because there's a, there's a lot of programming that you require the footage for. What I would do is work with James Gunn like in like an animatic space. Do you know what that is? Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, if you need the effect shot, you do Animex first, uh, just to kind of get the angles and everything. Kind right of like then. getting everything around before actually getting the main core of the footage. Right, right. So that's what I would do, is just kind of have placeholder footage, so that you can kind of go through it and uh, um, and you know kind of have everything. Now, did I hear him correctly that he's uh, fil filming the footage for the ride? with volume three and the Christmas special. Yep. All three. Wow. Yeah. It's a uh, heavy. Wow. Yeah. It's a heavy shoot. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a lot in his play for sure. And I mean, he can't do it. He, I mean, ideally he would have done it yesterday, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Like yeah, it's exactly. just, we need that footage. They were well, hoping that they would get footage in love and thunder, but yeah didn't happen yeah that's what they were shooting for but i think also too because uh bautista said that he's going to be done yeah after volume three so i think after hearing that james probably said you know what we're just going to do one two three and you know before yeah. more delays come <laughs> yeah it's it's the, the the great thing about it is it's so much cheaper so much more efficient like you have everybody in costume you have the guys that actually uh, uh, do makeup for um, for uh, the the you know uh, you know uh, uh, Gamora and Drax like yeah. you get you all you got all that you got the people you got the guys like let's just do it you know let's just let's just uh, you know um, bat it out they, kind of thing. They did the filming for Mission Breakout during the time two yeah. two right yeah yep okay. yep yep so it's like if we can. Yeah, I mean the, the the whole the whole kind of idea was let's give the people a, a authentic Guardians of the Galaxy experience. What more authentic than doing it during a uh, shooting is actually being done because you have all you have access to all those resources. You just add on a couple of days and boom, you're you're good to go. And now it's like okay, well, <laughs> you know, now we really got to get it all kind of done here. So it's it's going to be really interesting to see how that all works. Um, God, I, I want to say summer 2022, but man, you know, it's like... You think with the demand, it's going to be a little bit longer? <sighs> Do you think they'll wait till after the 50th is over? Let me, let no. me put it... No, you think it'll still be during the 18 month? I think so, yeah. I think so, yeah. That'll be the kind of the, the, the thing that cap. That is off. true because of already telling fans that it was supposed to be ready for October 1st. Shh. 
point can now actually say that it's not going to be for the 50th celebration. Mm-hmm. That's going <laughs> to. When, when, at what, what was the year D23 Expo they announced Tron? Was it 20? That was. 15? Give me a, that was 2017. <laughs> That was 2017 when they announced they announced Tron Guardians and Ratatouille. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, oh my God, we're still waiting for these things. You know, it's five yeah. years or whatever. Velocicoaster's done. It's open, you know. And, yeah. it, and that yes. was designed, placed in Hagrid, open. Hagrid's was done. Velocicoaster. Yeah. It I, was like, ugh. I think in, in the time that it's taken tron to be designed land shifted all that and then by the time it'll open universal would have had like three attractions <laughs> you yeah. know it's well, i'm even really surprised with tron and ratatouille well i mean i know ratatouille was pretty much already completed yeah it was more so of the shutdown that delayed that one Absolutely. but i thought for sure tron would have been way ahead of schedule over guardians because it's basically a replica of an already existing attraction, so I. Oh yeah, I I think it would have, I think it would have, um, I think I think if this shutdown didn't didn't happen, I think Tron might, I think it, it you know, strong likelihood yeah. it would have been open, and the railroad would be going and all that kind of stuff. But when the cash flow stops, it's like okay, well we have no choice. Yeah. And then when we want to ramp back up, it's like yeah, but everybody does. <laughs> so it's like yeah. where are those contractors <laughs> going to come from? And now it's like you got to split them between Guardians and Tron. And who gets priority? It's like, yeah, because I'm assuming they want them both open at the same time. I think time. they do. I think they do. And 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 I'll I'll say this. They might they okay, they might do soft openings for those things depending on which one opens first, or or which one is completed first. I should say. Um, but as far as official opening, I wouldn't doubt that Tron or saw or Guardians, whichever one is completed first gets held back for the other one to to be completed op- yeah open up at the same time yeah because it's that like, would yeah because the, the the issue is is like when you have attractions on this kind of at this kind of demand so many people are you know it's like the annual pass holder thing right some people are just gonna wait until the other one's open before booking yeah. a vacation or anything like that so it's like okay rather than having one park just overloaded with guests split them up by opening it the same day you know between the between the between the two parks and that way people have to choose that way if you do have a boarding group system they can choose between rise guardians tron balance up the parks that way if they have park operas and so forth i think it all makes kind of sense that they would delay it to, to yeah. delay the opening of one so the other could, could finish yeah. and they could open up together yeah might have soft openings but we'll see And then what's going to be interesting for me is after the fact that these projects are completed, Mm -hmm. what's going to be Disney's next move and how they're going to approach for future projects. Because these projects were already in the midst of being started Mm -hmm. when the shutdown happened, the pandemic happened. Now I really want to see what's going to happen after this is all done when they actually take a project from scratch after post-COVID. Yeah, I know. That's going to be interesting. Like, what what gets priority? Yeah. And there was some conversation before about, you know, taking the... Have you heard about the envelope of protection? Uh, Um, Like, when you're designing a roller coaster, for example, you have to distance your sets and anything physical out from it and give a guest enough space so that if they can't just reach over and touch something when they're oh, okay. there, right, that's the yeah. envelope of protection. Okay, that's what it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and if you <laughs> they test this out with roller coasters in a very interesting way, they, they essentially have like just like a white board placed in the ride vehicle or whatever, and a bunch of sticks shooting out all sides. <laughs> and because it, it's supposed to emulate like a guest with a really long reach, right? And they run that ride vehicle through and wherever that stick broke off, when it comes back on, it's like, hmm, okay, something happened. And then they walk around the track and they see where the 
board broke off, and it's like, okay, well, we got to get rid of this, and 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 so forth, or or adjust this, you know, carve in that rock work a little bit, that kind of thing. Uh, but there was an idea that do you apply that to the cues and to waiting? Like, do you apply it to the entire attraction because it's like social distancing, right? Right. Like, how long is this going to be with us? Do we integrate those in our designs? Um, or at least kind of have safety valves to allow for that in the future if you have to implement them. That way you're not stuck in like a rise situation, right? Where it's like, uh, you know, how, how do we bypass this show piece? You know, this kind of gets you to the Star Destroyer. Do we have people go back? You know, that kind of thing. Um, I, I think that's kind of dropped away, but it, it's going to be interesting. Do you pick projects that favor those attributes? Or do you... Do you design products that were already like going into theme parks or, or you kind of had an idea that these things were moving along? Do you adjust those designs to take that into account? Like that, that kind of stuff really fascinates okay. me and intrigues me. Like it makes me wonder like after this is all said and done, if they end up putting like the uh, Mary Poppins cherry tree lane concept back in for Epcot. <sighs> Maybe I, I know that was already like a, that wasn't going to be like a huge thing. Like it wasn't going to be like an e-ticket yeah. or whatever. When they announced it during the time when Mary Poppins Returns was like at its peak, so now it's like years later. Yeah. Are people still are people still interested? That's a harder <laughs> sell, I think. And yeah, you know, and honestly, it's like Corella is a hit. It's getting a sequel. Yeah. UK Pavilion. Do you do something like that? That is true. You know, it's like now thinking about it, that's the that's the more obvious play in terms of in, in terms of my mind. Uh, that is true. I didn't even think of. I mean, obviously, I knew like the the, uh, the setting for 101 Dalmatians and and Corella, but it never really dawned on me for the UK pavilion. And obviously, because you see the London, oh yeah, uh, telephone booths and everything. So yeah, yeah. So it's like I think you kind of had to balance that out, like. Yeah, we love Mary Poppins and stuff like that, but like JPEG isn't. I mean, that that guy's a. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry for my language, but guys, a... <laughs> guys, a... guys, a... <laughs> you know that kind of. <laughs> no, he's a, he's a hatchet man, man. He he has oh, yeah. just he has no sentiment regarding all of this, you know. And it's like oh, yeah. no current today. We want Disney today. Yeah. The past, it's the past. Yeah. Mary Poppins, ah, you know, that kind of, yeah, that kind of like, stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, if you view it through that lens, Cruella is far more, you know, let, let me put it to you this way. Like when we were on vacation, mm -hmm. the room was fine. The beds were fine. Mm -hmm. The pillows, um, the pillows is what I like have to describe as JPEG. Uh -oh. When you look at them on the exterior, mm -hmm. they have potential the work. But then when you, you have them in action, they go a little flat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and I think for, for, uh, for, what is it? For like projects getting put back on the plate, whatever products that do end up c coming back on, um, and get slotted into their respective parks. And, and honestly, it's going to really depend on, what Chapex level of investment is or Josh G. Morrow's level of investment, for example, for the parks division, because obviously I don't think we're going to get back to $25 billion worth of capital, you know, expenditures, right. you know, it's going to be reduced and it's going to be really interesting to see, like you said, what projects get the green light, you know, what's a priority. And even within that, do we change designs or do we change story? Do, do we change concepts? Right, you know. And I think it's going to be possibly, like as you mentioned, about like the budget and everything. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have multiple projects going off back to back to back. I think that they're going to probably choose maybe like one or two that yeah. are really going to be the most popular and work on them. And then after that, then they announce another one or two. I don't think it's going to be like three or four or five projects going off at once. I don't think so. I will say the only thing that kind of gives me a little bit of hesitation and pause at least for Walt Disney World, is Epic Universe. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, because yeah. we didn't bring that up during the show, but some people yeah. believe that this is in prep for Epic Universe. 
for the center of gravity shifting with the guests in Florida, not just within the company. And if there's going to be an, um, a bigger uh, emphasis placed on the Floridian market in terms of who gets the guests, do you want to have your creative team out there to respond? That is true. You know? That makes me wonder if by that point, if Disney will not just do single attractions, but if they're going to actually make more lands. Yeah. Like multiple lands. Right. It's going to be fascinating to see because I know um, – like lands are super expensive. Like lands are like, yeah. you know, I mean, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was a billion dollars. So I think they want to have themed environments surrounding these um, these attractions. But will they be in the forms of actual lands? Or will they be in the forms of like neighborhoods? Yeah. <laughs> um, that's going to be kind of an interesting to kind of to see that. Uh, but but I think you're right. I think capital expenditures will slow. I don't think we'll get like, you know, three attractions at once kind of thing at, at a D23 Expo anymore. At the same time, though, does even that change when Epic Universe is coming online? Because it's the, you know, that has a lot of people with, uni- with Universal, I mean, they kind of threw their little digs at Disney when yeah. they said, you know, oh, we're going forward. You know, we're starting the construction process back up immediately. Yep. It wasn't like just a couple months, it was yep. immediately. And I will say Universal was very aggressive in getting their additions that they were already building uh, being constructed at, during the shutdowns and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Like, because Disney stopped. They just, like, put on the brakes. Yep. And for Disney's perspective, yeah, that was a smart thing to do because you're a studio that doesn't release movies. <laughs> you have four or five ships with two being constructed or whatever that are completely docked. You have, you know, the, these theme parks that generated like, you know, 40% of your revenue at minimum down. We got to pump the brakes on the spending here, people. Uh, and so, yeah, it made sense. Universal, not that way. It was yeah. whatever we're building, just keep doing it. And that's aggressive. Uh, yeah. Now, obviously, their cash flow was different because of Comcast, but that's but, aggressive. That's, well, that's what I was just going to ask you. Is it do- going moving forward in the future? Is mm-hmm. it best that Disney stays just as Disney as far as owning their own company, so to speak, as opposed mm-hmm. to where Comcast owns Universal? As far as like the, the theme parks go, of how Comcast runs like with Universal. Oh, yeah, okay. Would it be best that Disney actually not sells itself, but but like has more autonomy? Yeah, like does it the Disney Parks Experiences and Parks Division? Yeah, maybe. Uh, and the reason I say that is because Disney obviously loves synergy. They kind of yeah, love the kind of interaction between all this. I mean, you're seeing that too. Look, I mean, look at Disney Plus, right? It's a very small way, but. Look at the integration with Disney Plus and Avengers Campus and the interaction that they have with that, where Loki's coming out with a new costume every single week or whatever, yeah. with, to go along with new episodes and so forth. They like that kind of stuff. Does that get lost when Disney Plus, I'm sorry, Disney Parks Experiences and Parks has more autonomy? I'm not sure. Um, I'm, I am hearing, it's very interesting you bring this up because I am hearing that Disneyland and Walt Disney World are becoming more autonomous in how they operate their theme parks. So it's kind of like the opposite of the, like the one Disney pr- philosophy. Mm-hmm. Um, one Disney wasn't good for Walt Disney World or Disneyland because yeah. they're, they're so different. They're different. They're completely different. Completely different. Guests, yeah. uh, guests interact with them differently. You know, a first time person going to Disney can go to Walt Disney World and then Disneyland and see the difference. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. hundred um, percent. While the parks themselves might not be that different, the resorts are vastly different. And so, you know, because of that, one Disney was never going to work. We did lose some stuff along the way, though, to figure that hard lesson out. But now you're kind of seeing with all this corporate kind of corporate consolidation, with all this kind of shifting of, you know, this, that, and wherever, I'm hearing internally that, no, Disneyland's getting, they're getting more control 
for their parks. They're getting more operational control. They're getting more um, deference to uh, management and and what Burbank says and so forth and what, what Disney World wants to do and stuff like that. It's like, no, Disneyland's our park. We're going to manage it the way we want. And so Walt Disney World is doing kind of the same thing. And from that perspective, maybe Disney Parks Experiences and Products is like, hey, we want a little bit more autonomy. Like, to your point, Universal Creative being distinctly different from Universal or even Comcast. It's like, you know, can, yeah. can you know, can, can, can we be given the keys or can we be given the ability to, to kind of steer our own ship? You know, yeah. that. I think maybe, maybe, okay, possibly, uh, but we'll we'll see though. Because we'll really, could could have Universal restarted the construction immediately without having Comcast under the banner as far as like with the with like the budget and finances go? If it was just Universal, mm-hmm. could they have done it on their own to say, "Yep, we're just going to turn the switch back on immediately and start the construction"? As far as like with the uh, Oh, without Com- without Comcast involvement, no, there's no way, okay. no way. They they Universal. Um, I mean, Universal has had they've had several different owners and stuff because they've had they have had kind of financing issues and stuff, and and uh, um, you, you really do need the backbone of somebody like a, like a Comcast to really fund these things out. Had Universal been by them, or, or had it just been NBC Universal, for example, there's no way they would have had the cash flow to continue the products like, like they did. But I think because Comcast is like an ISP <laughs> and <laughs> internet <laughs> internet services went up, not down, it's like, oh yeah, we, we got we got some cash. We can we can we can you know because Universal was smart. They understood, and I think Disney understood this too. But they just didn't have a choice. Demand was going to be unbelievably high when this whole thing went away and it's like, we want to be ready for that. And going forward, we want to position ourselves, uh, um, you know, in a way that not only absorbs the demand now, but absorbs the demand later. Like we want to be better off from this whole thing, not worse off. Right. Yeah. And when, well, and, and even look what's going on right now, it's still like up in the air, up and down, back and forth. Like with the, Mask mandates being reapplied, possibly, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, well, Universal Studios Hollywood just put on the mask mandate again, yeah, because LA County, you know? in LA County, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, that that sucks. I think from Disney's perspective, they want to be in a better place too. Obviously, they're doing it more operationally though, and more managerially, right? Mm-hmm. Universal, yeah. they're just going, <laughs> they're going tried and true. You invest yeah. in the parks. You, inv- you 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 make new parks. You make new rides. You make new, you know, overlays or whatever in the former Jurassic World or whatever. You you do things that people book vacations for. Our yeah. operations are already streamlined, baby. You know this is what we're going to be doing here. So, uh, yeah, I think I think I think that's where they're at. Wow, mm-hmm. it is going to be very interesting. I'm actually curious. I I really do hope. Um, the expo does come out in uh, 2022. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I would like to see what it's going to be moving forward, especially since they said this was supposed to be sort of like uh, the overall theme for the 100 years of the company itself. Oh, man. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's a I'm big very, one. Yeah. So I'm very curious. Now, they usually, with the expo tickets, they usually... Come on, sell so like the August. Tickets. They usually sell the tech uh, the tickets one year to the day of the first day of the expo. Oh, so I didn't know that. If that is going to be the case, it mm-hmm. would be September 9th of this year. Okay. That they'll, they'll the okay. Okay. I see. I see. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, assuming everything goes well, I know. Like, look, the the Dow dropped 900 points yesterday because of all the COVID talk and stuff. Yep. Oh God! You know, I just. I think it'd be very telling, though, if they sell tickets on September 9th, You know, 
according to uh, the the timeline that you put out there, and, and yeah, I think I think that is how it runs. I just didn't know the intricacies of it. If they do end up selling tickets on September 9th, that tells you they plan on doing it, right? Because yeah. they're I don't think they're going to sell anything that they can't deliver on at this point. Well, and that's and that's what I was discussing when we were all on. That's what makes me somewhat concerned with the destination D. Now I know the destination D is going to be November of this year. So that's completely different than September of next year. Sure. Okay. But when they say that tickets are going to be going on sale in July mm-hmm. and it's July and, 20th and it's, yeah, we have 11 days left of this month and Disney has yet announced to say a date when tickets go on sale. Are they pushing back the destination D? Well, um, I don't think so. Only because Florida's Florida's not going to have a problem putting on an event in the same way that maybe Anaheim that or true. the state of California might. That is true. So because of that, I don't think there's as many barriers to doing that as there might be for the expo. That said, when does the new Imagineering show debut? Isn't it July 24th? It is. I actually think it was today. Was it today? Is it today? I think it's today. Let me see. I think I got the app on it. Now that you actually said it, is it today? And you might be right because I don't see it on here. Okay. Imagine no, because it would be right in the front. What might is, be the what's the show called? Uh, <laughs> behind the attraction. Okay, let me see. Behind the attraction. Great memory, by the way. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm not okay, so wait, good. Wait, wait, wait. Behind the attraction. S- original sneak tomorrow. Peek. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay, what better way to synergize with the with this show? Then debuting the tickets for Destination D on that day. Like, hey, sign up for Disney Plus. We got this new show coming out. Here's Destination D tickets, kind of thing. Like, I. That's interesting. Can you imagine that? I think I, I, I can yeah. imagine that. Yeah, that would actually be a nice tie in. That would be a nice tie in, right? Well, I think I it would. I wonder if they would even announce to say, oh, yeah, on this day, tickets are on sale or they're just going to go, boom, tickets are up now. You know, everyone go for it. Yeah. Unlikely, but man, if, if, I thought it was July. I thought it was July twenty fourth, and I was like, okay, well, that gives it time to do that. But now it's like, or man, tomorrow. unless tomorrow they announce the date of the ticket. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I, like Radio said, I think there's still ten days left. So let's let's kind of yeah. get through a little bit more. Um, yeah. Sometimes these things are late, but eh, we know Disney. <laughs> yeah. You know, I hear, oh, well, we're going to have annual passes for Disneyland back before, you know, 2021. I'm like, you don't, you know, you, I'm not stupid. I'm not born yesterday. Yeah, and I think it's actually interesting because I was reading the description of this Destination D, and it's going to be based off of for Walt Disney World's 50th, and it said special announcements and sneak peeks that are for the 50th and what struck me to think the 50th will already be going on on October 1st. Yeah, it would be. This event is going to be in November. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if they'll actually have the released opening dates for Tron and guardians. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe they're doing more stuff for the 50th and instead of front loading it like you would traditionally would, maybe it is going to be something that they kind of drip feed out as we get along here to kind of extend the 50th out. Because the thing is you only get one 50th. My whole thing was just extend it out. Just like, you know, instead of making it yeah. 18 months apart, just make it two years. Who cares? Yeah, two years. Just yeah, yeah. Two years. yeah. Right. And, and it's like, you know, that way you, you, you you know any any projects or something like that you can just you can just wrap them into the fiftieth and boom you know you you've now got a new swath of 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 people that are that are going to be booking vacations to the parks and so forth. Um. So it could it could be those dates, but it also could be I think it's going to be a combination of maybe maybe those dates that actually seems quite likely now that you say it, but I think it might be like a combination of like hey here's new stuff you know um, yeah. because. Yeah. 
There is well because yeah, the, the the fireworks uh, Disney uh, Enchantment, I think that's yeah. what it's called. That's already going to be premiered on October first. Harmonious will already be up. Yeah, yeah. So I based off it being closer to the end of November and moving forward into the summer of 2022. Yeah. I'm just wondering if that's when they're going to announce for Tron and guardians. I think you're, I think that that timeline makes sense. I think that timeline makes sense. I think there's a good shot. Good, there's a good chance that destination D might have, uh, if in fact that they, you know, um, do it for this year, which is weird because what Disney world has been like, like you guys aren't getting candlelight. No. Or a lot of the festivities and stuff, but we are. Yeah. Like yeah, we're, we're not even getting the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas party this year. It's only going to be Christmas after hours. That's bizarre to me. Because, like, Disneyland is like, they've been bullish. They, they've been like, no, we're getting <laughs> we're getting Haunted Mansion Holiday back. We're getting Small World Holiday back. We're getting, you know, all these kind of things. Even though that they severely uh, lack the technicians to pull it off. <laughs> yeah, but they're still like we're gonna do it, and it's like I don't know how, <laughs> but I'm, I'm gonna be interested to see how this goes. But they're gonna do it. It's like okay, um, but it's like a Walt Disney World. It's like no, we're not gonna have candlelight. We're not gonna do it. And it's like why? You know, it just doesn't make any sense. So as far as that goes, maybe destination D, destination D is canceled. You know, for those arbitrary notions. But I think it's put on by D twenty three, right? Yes. Yeah, it's fully run by D23. Okay, so maybe not. Maybe, yeah, maybe they're just late. Maybe it's just, you know, maybe it's just, maybe maybe, maybe it is what we suspected, that they uh, that they just... Um, yeah, because I was curious. I was going to yeah. try to maybe get a ticket to attend it because it's, it's several days before Thanksgiving and it's on a weekend, so I might be able to sneak down there for the event zip in zip out i see yep. i see yeah i mean maybe uh, um gonna have to talk to the missus about that one it sounds like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh that's fine though um my my thing on, on all this is is uh i went to one d23 expo and uh unfortunately it cost me a, an entire relationship <laughs> because it oh, was really? uh, uh yeah we just had a not the greatest time so, uh, in terms of D23 Expo or something like that, I, you know, take a You're step like, back and let, let other people do those things. I have, I have done, I, I did, I was quite fortunate about my D23 Expo experience and stuff. So I'll let other people do that. <laughs> I mean, why do you think I went to the Expo alone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Exactly. Exactly. I would... Recommend that <laughs> if yes, you're going to do that. Well, especially with, with her because mm -hmm. she doesn't do well with – now, I know this is ironic because she loves the parks, mm -hmm. but she doesn't do well with overly amount of people. Mm -hmm. And the way people react at the expo of the pushing and the shoving and the trying to get to – she does yeah. not do that well. And – to take her and buy a ticket for that, she would just be miserable, and yeah. then that would make me miserable. And it's like, let me scope it out. I'll go deal with it. You stay home and be happy. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I, that's that is good advice, family man. That's why they call you the family man because yeah, you're there. You go. They're the, you're the best at this, right? <laughs> I would have yeah. taken that. I would have loved to have taken that advice before. But um, you know, the thing about it is, is is uh, is yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've grown up with the parks like my yeah. entire life. Also, I've grown up with going to like other kinds of conventions all you know my, my entire life. So I'm kind of used to that atmosphere. I'm used to that kind of, mm -hmm. you know, the the, the kind of you know fighting with people. And so I'm kind of used to it now. I don't you know I don't much prefer, but if I have to, I will. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, but you know, it's just yeah, like you said, it's like. Other people might not be, <laughs> and that might not be so great. And uh, well, now it makes me wonder with the expo. You know that they're going to be heavily on a reservation system to even get into the oh, panel. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. they're not going to have no standby no line. No way, no way. They were already kind of moving towards the system. A system yeah, they were. Yeah. yeah, they were. So I, honestly, it's going to be you either have oh, a reservation yeah. or you don't get in. Oh yeah, that. That's how it's always been. That's what it is. And for me, it's like, eh, peace. I'm out. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> um, 
Uh, because, you know, it's uh, some of those panels are so amazing. Oh, yeah. And the people are going to film anyway. Yeah. Well, and, and the ones that you would really think would be OK. And then the immaculate ones, it's actually vice versa. When I did the yeah, Aladdin, the Aladdin panel. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. That one was so spectacular yeah. when they had uh, Scott Weinger on there. Linda Larkin. They had did they have uh, Eric Goldberg there. Uh, he was there, yeah. yes. And that one was just immaculate. And then you go into the Parks and Resorts panel, and you have Chapek bringing out the CEO of Target. Like, <laughs> Bullseye the dog. Yeah. Man, I could not believe that. I was like, wow, you really took the Disney Parks uh, uh, part of that it and the products, consumer. consumer products part of it. You really took that yeah. to heart, didn't you? <laughs> That was just all consumer. God. That one was crazy. I actually have a <laughs> Let's see if I can actually find it. I took a picture of myself because I was so tired because I literally stayed overnight for that panel thinking that I was going to get something more than what it was. And then I snapped a selfie of myself after the fact that they made that Target announcement. Mm-hmm. And let's see if I could find it. And I just have to share. I did actually, because I was tired on top of agitated with that announcement, because it's just like, I did not wait in line to listen to that. Yeah. That should be coming up. So I I had to just kind of snap a a selfie. Where the hell is it? Okay, I'm up <laughs> I couldn't believe that <laughs> I was following because I yeah, I follow um, the stuff on Twitter. Uh, here it is. I don't know if you could. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> I think I, and you know what? <laughs> that that is a great. That's a great shot. It says so much because for you, it's like I've been waiting hours and hours and hours for this thing to 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 be in this room. With this yeah. bald, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I've gone through the ringer for this, and you bring out freaking bullseye from Target. You got to be out your mind, <laughs> like you know. And it's just, I would have been more thrilled if he would have brought out a bullseye doll from Toy Story Two, the horse. Yeah. I'd rather see that bullseye than than the. Uh. Oh yeah, I know. It, it was. Honestly, it was embarrassing. It and was then embarrassing. And they're handing out, what was it, envelopes. Mm-hmm. That one lucky person will have $1,000 on a Target gift card to go buy <laughs> merchandise. Jesus Christ. You know, <laughs> I think, you know what, okay, I, all right, all right, here's my theory. Bob J. Peck received so much scorn, so much criticism for that, that now that he's in the CEO position, he's just he's just giving it back to the fans. He's just like, you made fun of me. Well, I will take everything you love and destroy it. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's what's going on, right? It has to be. <laughs> oh, oh, easy. Yeah, he's probably in the back of his mind. He's like, all who doubted me thinking I wasn't going to get anywhere. Yep. See you, baby. <laughs> Nah, but yeah, I'll just I'll help other people. I'll well, actually, I was I was contemplating mm-hmm. of going because of the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company. But then, in the back of my mind, as you were saying, yeah, with you know, it's going to be reservation systems, and the expo was already a mess as far as with the the lines and it's a mess every year. They can't figure it out. Did you see? I don't know if you saw it. There was almost a riot there. Oh yeah. When, they had people in the, the, the waiting queue area in like the, uh, I call it the basement, yeah. you know, so to speak. And they had nobody down there mm-hmm. to secure it. All people broke out through the line mm-hmm. and got through to the animation panel. Oh, boy. And all the people that were waiting in the queue yeah. didn't go in. So they had to have actually. Oh, gosh. Uh, PR for the actual convention center come down oh to calm these people down and they actually all got in 
before anybody else for the live action panel before anybody else because they were there for yeah for the animation plus hours oh for animation God. and they didn't get in it's then this keeps happening too you know it's it's my frustration with the it stuff it's like <laughs> this isn't your first rodeo you've been managing people forever the first d23 expo they actually used the first d23 expo i think in 2009 i think it was yeah. they used disneyland cast members yes to, they did yeah, yeah. To, to do all that and it was such a smoother operation. Still problems. Still, still problems, but much yeah. smoother. Oh, it was. 2009, I actually, that was one of the best expos. Yeah. And then you go to 2011. Oh, it's. It was like, yep. what the hell happened? Yeah. It yeah. was like. Mm-hmm. And I was there. I, I experienced it firsthand. And, you you know, you talked about like almost a riot. There, they uh, On the last day of the expo, they had three panels scheduled back to back to back. It was all kind of Imagineering focused. And they didn't, they didn't um, figure out like, like the, the 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 people putting on the event for Disney didn't manage the queues properly, and so nobody knew where to necessarily line up. They're thinking they're getting to one panel and they're not, and so forth. And they had a chance to get another panel and they didn't. And fists started flying, oh, like yeah. literally brawls broke out, mm-hmm. and it was just like. What? And it's still like that today. And it's like, when are you guys going to figure this out? Like, when are you guys going to like, you know, nuts to butts, here we go. Here's what we're going to do once and for all. And your little virtual and queuing it, is not going to help and it, that. And it's honestly common sense stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's stuff that honestly a, a kid can solve. It's like yeah. you're already setting it up to fail. Mm-hmm. It's almost like Disney kind of, and they don't, but it, it's just they purposely want stuff to happen so they can show of how they quickly can recover. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Like, it's like, well, don't even do it in the first place. <laughs> it, yeah, it's just it's it just feels like, especially now, you know, I, I've uh, gotten very jaded over, over some of the decisions that they're doing. It's, it's becoming harder and harder for me to even defend any of their actions. But um, it's like they forgot how to run theme parks. <laughs> yeah. so in some ways, in some places. I don't know if you experienced that on your trip, but it's like they're just making like dumb mistakes. It's like, really? You, you guys have been running this place for 50 years, in Walt Disney World's case, 60 years in terms of Disneyland. It's like, yeah, you don't know like, how yeah, this you, works? Yeah, this is- this is nothing new. This yeah. is, you know, it's like, even like with the garbage cans, I mean, I oh, personally, didn't, I didn't personally experience it. Thank mm-hmm. God. Cause I probably nicely said something, yeah. mm-hmm. but someone just posted on, I think it was either Twitter or Instagram, uh, two trash cans that were part of the queue line for Mickey and Minnie's runaway railway. It was overflown where the garbage was actually falling down and it wasn't touched. In the queue. I mean, that's unheard of. You know, usually you would see that on the busiest days and maybe like near a restaurant, right? Maybe that would happen. I've never heard of that in queues. There's no way that that's unthinkable. And the reason that is, is because I know for Disneyland, and I'm sure a similar situation is in Walt Disney World right now, they're, they're trying to trim costs so much that they're purposefully not staffing as much custodial as they have previously needed. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're I mean, Chapek has talked about it. He's talked about it. Like we want, you know, higher yields. What he's saying is we want to work you harder mm-hmm. instead of working you at what was previously 100% of your duties. You're going to be now doing 120, 150. And so they're over, they're overworked. They're understaffed. And that leaves holes in the operation. They're doing things that are really kind of, really kind of ugly. For example, one of the big stories on my chat that's been going through the rounds is there's a third shift custodial team that usually does work during the third shift, during when the parks are closed. They get a lot of stuff done during that time. They're purposefully not utilizing that shift to the extent that they should be. In order to avoid what has been negotiated by the union, 
a lot of the extra perks to work those shifts because you get like an extra dollar, you get like an extra kind of 15 cents if you take those shifts on. So they're purposely like not filling those shifts in. Well, what that's causing is obviously people are like dismayed because it's like, hey, those are the shifts that, you know, support me and my family. This is a huge, you know, I, I've, I've done things to accommodate for this third shift. If you're not going to have it on that, that's going to interrupt my lifestyle kind of thing. But also, too, at, at restrooms at Disneyland right now, they're closing an hour early before the park does in some locations because the day shift or the evening shifts that would normally not have to worry about that now have to do those things. But because their hours are the way they are, they have to do those things while the park is open. So these things that they would normally do after park close, they can't do anymore. So they have to do it while the parks are open. And that's causing huge, yeah. you know, I'm thinking, where are you going to go to the bathroom? Um, exactly. Kind of thing. And that that's bad. Uh, but this has gotten to a point where now, on July 17th, the union who does custodial actually organized a protest on the Harbor Boulevard entrance on July 17th oh, to wow. protest these things that are going on. These, you know, why are, why do we have people that are on furlough that haven't been called back? Why are, you know, we're getting, sh you know, you know, uh, shrilled shifts in the way that, you know, uh, I just talked about before. Why are these people overworked? Why are, you know, and they're going for higher pay, obviously, because California expenses are going up completely. <laughs> they're pissed. They're mad. Uh, yeah, and honestly, they have every right to do so. And that's yeah. what the speculation was during the first furlough. Yes, I get it. Cast members had to be let mm -hmm. go for the purpose of, you know, it was closed. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't keep paying someone not to work. Yeah. You know, I get that. Yeah. But then that second wave of closures, mm -hmm. was that actually necessary? Was it? And I truly feel that that second wave was, in a way, Ch Chapek's way of saying, you know what? This is my opportunity yep. to kind of cover what I'm doing yep. without it being noticed. Absolutely. No, no. And, and look, uh, you know Andy Castro online on Twitter? Yeah. 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 Um, you know... <laughs> I have my disagreements with Andy, okay? But what he said was profound in that he said, hey, look, for a person like Chapek to do these things and hide behind the cover of this pandemic is a perfect situation for him. Is, mm -hmm. you know, it's like he can do whatever he wants because he can just say, hey, we're doing it for pandemic reasons or we're doing it because we have to make up revenue or lost revenue from this. And that just allows him to do all kinds of stuff. And in that way, he's right. And it's kind of scary. And that's what we're yeah. seeing. And even with but the. It makes me wonder when the next quarterly earnings comes out. Yeah. It's going to be way better than what the last two were. Oh, absolutely. It will. So yeah. I wonder once the numbers start showing, mm -hmm. sooner or later, he's going to have to answer to that demand of bringing more cast members back. I. Uh, he has to. I mean, you know, you talked about the uh, uh, overflowing trash cans. I'll say this. There are, it, it's not just in the form of trash cans. Restrooms aren't being attended to as, as often as they were. And they're being left dirty in a lot of cases. You know, vents um, are, are, you know, have dust on them that would usually be blown off. All these different things. And for me... Knowing the history of the Disney Company, knowing the history of these theme parks, and knowing the operation as, as, as well as I do, I really worry. Because this is at a time when these parks should be cleaner than ever, right? Oh, yeah. Because the sentiment remember, is there. Like, like Any time that I resonated with a Disney park, it's like I could eat off the ground. Exactly. Right. And it's like, you know, like the five-second rule with Disney, I always said that's a 25-second rule. Pretty much. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like now it's like, uh, I'm starting to get like that Six Flags type of. Oh yeah, yeah, and a lot of people have said that. Where it's like, hmm, this is kind of Six Flags, -ish, you know. And it, I'm sorry, but they're not charging Six Flags prices. No, you know. And it's like, okay, at a time when cleanliness should be at the forefront or be at the priority, this is being skimped on. Okay. Huh? If you're skimping on this, what else are you skimping on? Yeah. Because you and I, you know, we're we're vets. We know the history. Yeah. 
Yep. We know the Cynthia Harris days and what happened with Big Thunder and what happened with Columbia. Yep. These could have serious, <sighs> devastating consequences. Okay. Yes. Irre- irrevocable. All right. I'm just saying, do we have to learn these lessons again? You have well, people's lives time, in your hands here. And this time, God forbid, if something were to happen, mm-hmm. social media covers everything oh, God. from beginning to end. Disney actually had their butts saved with yeah. those because social media wasn't the forefront yeah. of everything. And they can and control the story. If something were to happen now, mm-hmm. there's nowhere for Disney to hide. Dude. They have to announce it and like right there. Okay? I'm telling you, you're, you're, you're right on. You're right on there. I'm, I'm telling you right now, man, if you're skipping on this stuff, it, it, it just worries me. What, and that's, that's not to say that Disney's an unsafe place. Uh, not at all. Uh, but I just, I worry. Because it's like, you know, I've seen this story before. I've seen where this goes. And previously, um, you know, after that incident, after those incidents, um, and especially like, even with smaller stuff like Tiki Room completely breaking down and, and uh, uh, um, you know, sunlight coming through the thatched roofs in some cases, Space Mountain completely, you know, because they deferred maintenance for so long, that had to be completely rebuilt. And, and the carousel, that had to be completely rebuilt because they deferred maintenance and so forth. It becomes far more costly yeah. to fix these issues than it is to prevent them in the first place. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, I, I'm hope, hopefully it will not have devastating consequences in, 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 in what we've seen before. But I'm just I'm just saying that, like, I'm hoping they know that and they recognize that and understand that. Well, when I was down there with Splash Mountain, yeah. uh, the ride was down for three quarters of the day because what had happened was the ride was in motion. Mm hmm everything completely shut down Mm -hmm. as it shut down Mm -hmm. the log flume was already in the process of going down the the uh the final drop okay as that was happening automatically when the log hits the bottom Mm -hmm. it connects back onto the track so to speak to move along well when everything shut off nothing was moving so when the log hit the bottom Mm -hmm. the log went sideways oh and it got caught between the um the belts yeah. of the track okay I get and you. it stuck there so they had to do an emergency evacuation for everyone on the ride get the log out so that literally took and then have to reset the system and everything yeah. that took three quarters of the day luckily no one was hurt but mm-hmm. That, that took three quarters of the day and the ride was completely non-function yeah. till like 6 p.m. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, you know, um, I'm just saying that there are there's a minimum operational standard you have to uphold with these parks because people's lives are in your hands yeah. and these are big, heavy machines. These are big, heavy you know, ride vehicles, contraptions that you've constructed that you have to keep up, that you have to, you know, I mean, you just, there are just some costs you don't cut. And that's what Paul Fressler and Cynthia Ferris found out the hard way. Yeah. And everybody suffered because of it. Um, uh, I, 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 I hope, I just pray that we're not going towards that route. But when I see things like cleanliness being short shifted right now that's crazy. that's nuts that's insane so what else aren't they prioritizing yeah mm. just just to cost cut the almighty dollar just to save a few bucks where eventually it could end up making you lose dollars in absolutely the end who is going to want to pay that amount of money mm-hmm. and have the experience of what people are getting they might as well should just go to six flags that's it that's it exactly for, That's it precisely. For more than half the price cut. Oh yeah, yeah. And then you can do it. You know, if 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 the if the if the quality of experience is going to be the same, why not? Yeah. 
And it's even like with the bus drivers. Yeah. They've had third party bus drivers, third party buses. Yeah. There are more third party buses on property than actual Disney buses. Uh, well, yeah. The, the, the bus driver situation is really bad. I don't know if you heard the show where I, I, where I said this, but they're down, they're at the point now where they, there's, there's literally no available drivers in the entire state. Uh -huh. And so they're having to ship in drivers from out of state and put them up in, in rooms or, or in facilities on Walt Disney World property just to have bus drivers doing this. That's yep. the kind of just complete uh, d demand that they have for cast yep. members. And it's just they're not there. And yet when you go on DisneyCareers.com, mm -hmm. they don't even have no new jobs available. That actually, with everything reopening and everything sort of kind of going yeah. back to normal, yeah. those careers, yeah. there should be over 500 pages worth of open positions. For you would think. Members. You would think. You know, I will say, you know, Josh DiMauro himself, you know, he was saying – because uh, previously Disneyland Resort was at about thirty-two thousand cast members that would work that that they that they, that they had um, hired uh, or, or, or you know kind of on the on the rolls there, and now it's down to like fifteen thousand. It's like half, you know, and we're seeing that everywhere. And Josh Demarell's like, oh yeah, in the coming months we'll be hiring hundreds of more cast members. I'm like, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> hundreds. You don't need they've, hundreds. They've, you need you need thousands. Thousands. Yeah, thousands. hundreds. And you need them yesterday. Yeah. Uh, 15. And it's in the what? coming months. You yeah. don't need months. You need hours. You need days. Exactly. Exactly. I, you know, and it's... It, 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 hopefully you can get what you had back. I think they've kind of gone through that pool, though. And if you have, then you need to train. So you need cast members for that. And it's... Yep. I'm just saying... <laughs> What did y'all cut here? Yeah. What is not there anymore? And it's and it's nothing against Josh. I think he's a cool guy. I do love how he goes out and mingles with the guests in the park. I do like that a lot. But yeah. there, with that, mm -hmm. you have to still push out a little bit more oh, yeah. than just putting your face on social media, saying I'm out here in the parks. Yeah, it's like what more can you do for the company? Right bring it back to it and I have yet to see so far him take that leadership role as the parks and resorts experience right. in that division I have right. yet to see yeah because he has he I mean he claimed credit for some of this stuff too and I've been saying for a while we got to start looking at Josh here. Yeah, it's not just JPEG. Mm -hmm. Josh is, he's, he's in the hot seat. Yeah. We didn't blame Bob Iger for what, um, JPEG, when JPEG did. was in parks. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. So I'm just saying, Hey, if you want to be the guy, look, I love the fact that he's in the parks all the time. I love the fact that he's getting firsthand knowledge that he's, yes. he's out there. I've been saying that for years. Yeah. You're run the parks. If you're going to design for the parks, you have to visit them. Yes. Which is one good thing about this, uh, like, Nona move. Because it, yes. that might allow for Walt Disney World, who he desperately needs the attention, let's be honest here. Yeah. Like, some of their facilities are just like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> at Disneyland, <laughs> that wouldn't be acceptable. But here here it is. No. You got to have people visit here. Um, so that's great. But at the same time, Josh, you're making some decisions here. I, you really, you got to, you got to, Double think this thing because these parks just they won't last at 15,000. No, if you want to trim some fat, I understand. I get it. You got to cut operating expenses right now. I get it. But you're cutting out guest experience and you're not charging less for, mm -hmm. and you're overworking the customers that you have and churning through them at a rate that we've never seen before. I mean, people are just they're either not showing up or they're just I'm out, they're done because yeah. they're getting burnt out. It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. You, you got to think this here. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they do. Yeah. Yep. Alrighty. Well, hey, um, 
interestingly, this thing here uh, that, I, that I use automatically records every single time I turn it on. Oh. So if I if you want me to, I could deep you know dig into the files here, uh, take this audio file out, edit it for you, clip out this segment that we've been talking about here, and you can put it up on your channel if you want. Yeah, actually, if you can, because I was actually yeah. just going to say to you, too bad I didn't actually have anything to hit record, because that would have been, that now, was. I got, I got the audio, and uh, no video, but hey. I got the audio, so if you want to, you can. Hey, better than nothing. Better than yeah, nothing. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. I think that, uh, this was a good discussion. This was actually, okay. yeah. <laughs> I did, didn't think that we would get into it like this, but hey, you know, who, what happens? It, it, it hap- Yeah, it does. Anytime, like, I could just, just sit and chat. Mm-hmm. about different things and just go like from one subject matter to the next. And then I look at the time. It's like, well, well, we were really talking for two hours. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all here. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Hey, you know what? Uh, that's, that's the beauty. Uh, you know, when you get two theme park guys together in a room, good stuff happens as far as I'm concerned. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that's great. Dude. Hey, hey, I, we we did we definitely missed you while you were while you were gone. Thank so. you, I, I appreciate That's, it. That's uh, it's really cool to have you back, and the the, the, the the I think the contribution was was fantastic. So Thank welcome you. back, sir. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, I was I was keeping I was trying to keep up as much as possible, mm-hmm. and then um, when I saw the sixty sixth anniversary, mm-hmm. I thought, oh, I have to sit and watch. I don't care if this was almost two hours. I have to sit and watch this from beginning to end. Because <laughs> uh, Orange Grove actually asked me. He said. Mm-hmm. Do you want to be a part of it? And he said it was on, uh, was it Friday or Saturday? I think it was Saturday. I think mm-hmm. it was Saturday? It was either Friday or Saturday. Yeah. And I, said, like I, I would, and I said, that's the day I'm actually leaving. Oh, <laughs> my said, goodness that, gracious. I would, have, I would have done it. And I thought, well, I just have to watch it. And I'm literally, my wife is sitting there watching me <laughs> talk to myself into a screen <laughs> Like I'm trying to put in my input, oh. and she said, "She said you do know that they already recorded. They can't hear you." <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And it it sucks, you know. That I think that show came out a lot better than any of us were anticipating. You know, it was it, it was great. Yeah, I I, I put it on because um, because uh, sometimes I'll go over. Um, to you know the folks and I'll, I'll watch some of our content that we have there just kind of watch it with them kind of get their feedback and reaction from it uh because of our proximity and um you know it's it's fascinating because i was like oh let's just watch like the you know till we get to eventually and then i'll, I'll stop and then we can pick it up you know because two hours we just kept watching the whole thing because it was so so and I, I i was part of it and i was still like hmm <laughs> What do these guys have to say? <laughs> you know, because yeah. it was actually pretty good. It was actually pretty easy to listen. It was, it was mm. really good. Yeah. It was really good, and that's why when uh, Rudio suggested, you know, mm-hmm. to do DCA uh, while you guys were actually still recording, and he yeah. said to, to still do it, and I'm like, again, screaming through the screen, I'm like, yes, <laughs> yeah, there you go, perfect, perfect. So, yeah, if, when we do that show. Um, when we do that show, uh, it just definitely chime in. Like, if you have, like, if you had any ideas for any of the other, uh, you know, like, parts of Disneyland, just chime in with them. And we'll, we'll, we'll roll And I you. appreciate you actually mentioning my uh, idea for uh, villains. Oh, yeah. When, you, when you're on the fantasy section. So I got I got a little bit in there, even though I wasn't there. I got, I got a little bit in there. <laughs> we think of you, sir. We think of you. No, I, I couldn't talk about villains and not mention you. <laughs> like, you. Like, he, he did he did so much work. He's done so much work on this. This, this is like his passion. I gotta I gotta put this forward here. So I oh, appreciate right. it. Thank oh, you. Right. You're good. You're good stuff. But yeah, I, I'm actually very looking forward to the DCA one. Oh, especially yeah. because DCA needs the work yeah. where Disneyland kind of can still move on. I mean, we still want to see new additions and expansion mm. and everything, but mm-hmm. Disneyland can hold its own. It can. Like Orange Ghost said, it's so stacked. It's yeah. so stacked. And it is. I mean, it's just, it's like a one and a half day park. It's, it's insane. But DCA definitely needs to like, we got to get up here, man. We can't just sell park hoppers forever. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I, and that's what was, because I was looking at the ticket prices and I was, I'm still even debating, should I do a single day or a park hopper? Because I'm looking at it and it's like, if I do a single day, 
am I really going to spend the whole day? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why uh, Villains Grove worked out for us because it was like, oh, okay, so we can kind of like, it's like we can kind of see DCA in like a new light that we weren't necessarily going to see, and it's only like a little bit more than what a single day is. So it's like I kind of like it kind of made sense for us in that way, in yeah. a way that a park hop or a single day didn't. So that was kind of a kind of a blessing for I us. I mean, the one the one plus side with it is I if I did do a single day. I could probably spend my whole entire day in Cars Land and Avengers Campus and literally call it. Like, I could literally spend – and it's like Cars Land doesn't need touched. Avengers Campus doesn't need touched. Uh, everything else needs work, and oh. Pixar Pier needs Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I- I'm willing to wait up to, 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 to wait on – picks up here for a little bit uh i know that sounds strange because it's like eh, but the only reason i say that is because hollywood land really needs something bad oh, absolutely. like it's, oh, absolutely. it's absolutely. still I mean, the, you yeah really felt now that tower of terror became mission breakout yeah it, you can't even really call it hollywood land anymore there's no. really nothing there's nothing there it's a street <laughs> that leads off into monsters inc it's like <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> it's like I don't know. What, I don't know what you call it. It's like I don't know. 2001 DCA land. I don't know. I don't know what you. Yeah. I don't know what you do there, but um, it needs it needs significant help. It needs work. Yeah, I mean, as as bad as Pixar Pier could need the help, I think Hollywood Land Pixar Pier can still kind of withhold getting guest flow because of the Incredicoaster yeah. and uh, Midway Mania, where yeah. Hollywood Land. Honestly, I would basically bulldoze that whole entire thing and restart it from scratch. Pretty much. I, I'm, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, now that I'm kind of hearing about it and stuff like that, I'm hearing everything past Phil on Magic and the Disney, you know, those those restrooms next to the Disney, uh, Disney live on stage or whatever, the Disney, the, oh, the Disney, children's uh, show. Disney Junior. Yeah, Disney Junior, yeah, live on stage. Uh, everything past that gone. You know, that, that's what I'm hearing because it's just, it's like, what are you going to do? What are you going to salvage? You know, Hyperion obviously stays, but everything else, you know, because the animation building like that butchers is up right next to uh, Avengers Campus. Wouldn't it be great if you kind of, you can kind of integrate Avengers Campus into a, into a, into a larger design that encompasses more of Hollywood land and. Yeah, I mean, it, it all works. It all makes sense. Um, I think Eastern Gateway is a part of that, but yeah, it's just like you know, you, you need something. You, you need some help here. <laughs> this is this is this is bad. But but like you said, DCA, yeah, it definitely needs a more than Disneyland, and the potential is there. So oh, it's there. It's there, and the, and even with Disneyland Forward, mm-hmm. you can see that they got they got a nice if the city allows it, they got a nice chunk of land. If they could turn that parking lot and connect it right into DCA, they can have three to four more lands added into there. Yeah, or or have it uh, be a distinct park and have it kind of extend out into like the the the, uh, um, the Garden Walk area. If in fact they do purchase that, which I think they will. If you look at I like Disney, if, if you look at Disney Forward, it's like that's it, man. It's right there. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's the key that unlocks this whole thing. So, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, again, now that's only again just speculation of what could happen with it. You know, I'm for sure that it. You know, if they get the green, no, I'm not going to say if when they get the green light. Gotcha. Yeah. I, have, I like I that. Have to have, I have to have some hopes here. So Absolutely. it's like that. Uh, that I'm for sure that they had like there's like bridge walkways that would connect both parks into that one structure. So I'm for sure that they would still have something uh, blocking of what's DCA and what is Disneyland. Because once you cross over those bridges, you would then have to intertwine both parks. So I'm for sure that they would have to have something kind of of like an exit entrance sort of thing. That's the way. I mean, if you look at Disney Forward, that's what they were kind of saying would happen. I'm not quite sure whether or not 
those areas are going to be uh, theme. I, I think DCA, yes, but Disneyland, I think it's a stretch. Um, that being said, though, you're going to have to have physical berms of some kind, I would think. You know, they're, yeah. they're going to have to be distinct in some way. And if you do have side entrances there, yeah. I mean, Unless they use that as sort of like an entrance and an exit for people who have park hopper tickets. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. Kind of, uh, not too dissimilar from like uh, how Diagon Alley and uh, um, Hogsmeade interact, where you, you like yes. you have to have a park hopper to get on the Hogwarts Express. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. That it would be an easy that if someone had a park hopper, that if they're already in DCA and they want to go to Disneyland or vice versa, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. All right. Well, we'll see, man. Yeah. We will see, but I got to be heading out at least for right now. What I'll do is I'll um, I'll uh, edit this edit this out, cut up in a way that uh, um, that way you just get the you know the full conversation, full audio, but um, nothing else because we have our previous conversation on here. So yeah. and that way you could just you know put a put an image on it or whatever, upload it to YouTube, and, and it good to go. Nice. Mm-hmm. You got Thank it, sir. You. No problem at all, sir. I, I do I do what I can. <laughs> thank you very much um yeah so uh um i think uh, i think that would be it sir uh you're gonna be okay you're gonna be all right oh yeah i'm good it was a nice conversation nice talking with you it was it was good oh it was awesome i love this i love this gotta do it more often <laughs> all right sir i'll uh, i'll catch you later okay all right take care all right, thank you sir